course now I'll just fill in uh, now I will just finish up my welds on this right here and then I'll uh, clean that up some and paint that and move on to the next While I'm waiting for the paint to dry here, my paint here has already dried so we can get back to our power steering. So we've already uh, drilled our extra holes, grinded out a couple of nubs that were on there. Now I can just put this on there and I'm, uh, you'll notice these four bolts right here, right next to the master cylinder hole, that is what's going to bolt onto the master cylinder. But these other bolts, uh, they are going to allow me to bolt this plate up there and then the master cylinder boost. Okay, so this bolt right here, um, if it's in there, then it won't allow you to bolt this bracket up there. You just put it in there when you're drilling the holes and take it back out.
so we've got our bolts here and you can see here where they've been bolted in so now what we're going to do is we're going to take this guy right here and this is going to attach right onto here we have to drill a hole an inch and a half down from the original hole and that's where this is going to bolt in it's going to bolt into the opposite side over here to the back side uh, so we're going to go ahead and do that now and we'll also take our clutch right here and I'm just going to get in here with a little cutting tool and I'm just going to cut this thing off all together. Now you can uh, unassemble this and all that and cut it off and uh, put it all back together but you're still going to need a spacer in for where uh, this clutch used to be so you can't just take it out all together or it'll make this whole assembly a little bit floppy. But here you can see the um, rod that's uh, on here and what we're going to need to do is adjust this rod so that it lines up with a hole right here and when we unscrew this we don't want to unscrew just everything out of here and then only been hanging on a couple of threads here or screw and only be hanging a couple of threads here we want to make sure that we've got a good chunk of threads here here and here all holding on so we'll space that evenly and we'll tighten up these lock ends right here and then we'll bolt this up. When we bolt that up, there's a couple of washers that came with the kit like this right here and they are going to go in between this guy right here and the arm right up in here. On this bolt here, if I were to try to take this bolt and go this way, then it will hit on the steering column here. So this bolt has to go this way, then the heim joint, then the big fat washer, then through the arm, and then another washer, lock washer, and bolt up. Now it's too tough to be able to push this rod in here uh, from the um, master cylinder so you have to undo the master cylinder in the front and then you'll be able to have somebody hold it and move this rod out you can move the pedal far enough out so that you can get the nut on the back here because you'll have to have enough clearance here uh, on the connecting rod so when you install that bolt you'll actually have to have this back about this far now after I have that bolted up, now I'm going to have to double check my adjustment on my arm right here. And I do not want a situation where the um, arm is stretched out so much that it's actually applying a little bit of pressure on the massa cylinder. Because if it does, after the engine gets hot, the brakes will apply themselves all by themselves, so to speak, if this is pushed into the master cylinder too far. When we adjust this, we want just a little bit of um, play in here. And uh, so I'll adjust that and show you. So now, I have adjusted this all the way out, expanded it, and I can feel the pressure that's on the arm here. So I'm gonna now screw this in until I don't feel any pressure on the arm and I've got just a little bit of leeway right here. Okay, so that's about right there. So we want about three quarters of an inch right here before we can kind of feel it hit the mass of cylinder. So we're all bolted up. Make sure that this is tight. We'll make sure that we tighten these right here and then we're good to go. And now I'm gonna cut this guy out. 
Okay, so we are done in here. We got our brake set up, cut off this here. All this is set. So now what we're gonna do is work on the outside and I think instead of finishing up the power steering right now, I'm gonna go ahead and take care of the brake lines just so I'll have a little bit extra room to do so. And um, all I'm gonna do is come off the back right here and I'll come down, I'll get a little bit of a curly cue. I'll come over to the side here. We'll run it down across and then right here to our rear brakes so when we were trying to take that apart it did not cooperate we're gonna have to see what we can do uh, maybe have to cut that and uh, do an end on there Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to um, do your brake lines. First thing is to use the proper tool to cut it. So you just clamp this down and then you just spin it around and keep turning it each time and um, then you'll get a nice clean cut on here. Just clean up the inside of this cut. See these are marked, put it in the appropriate hole. Okay, let me get this guy. That's gonna be the height 
that the metal will come out of the top and tighten this down. Alright, so you put that pin in there and you tighten this down but don't smash the hell out of it. Now we're going to take it back off. Now we take this out and you can see how that's mushed down. Take this guy out and now we come back down. And that's what it'll look like when you're done. We'll just take it apart. Alright, so here is our rear brake lines. This is a quarter inch line. It's just what it came originally. So I just match it up to the quarter inch line that's over here. And the curly Q that you see right here is that the uh, master seal and everything, of course, is b bolted to the cab. And then, um, then the line's going to come down and then it's going to uh, be strapped onto the frame. So you can get a little bit of vibration in between the cab and the frame. And if you just went with a hard 90 degrees down, over the years, uh, sometimes the jiggling can cause brake lines to crack. It's not that common, and it's not like a real big deal that you do this, but uh, sometimes it looks a little bit cooler if you put the curly cues on. But this way, if there's any vibration in any of this, it will be uh, taken up by a curly cue there. Now, I would do my front brake uh, lines, but I think I'm going to need to relocate my shock mount here first. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, cut that off and get it relocated.
All right, my brake lines are just about done. I'm gonna have this come down on the, for the front right here, and we got a T, that, so one will go to the right side and one will go to the left. Unfortunately, I am out of brake line going to the other side, so I'm gonna go ahead and put my power steering gearbox on. All right, on our plate right here, all of these holes right here, they don't have any threads in them. Bolts just go straight through. This one here, however, is threaded. A fine thread that is going to go through the bottom of your power steering gearbox right here. So we have to drill this hole out on the gearbox so that this will fit right through there. I believe that's a half inch. Now we're going to go ahead and unbolt our steering column uh, intermediary rod right there.
Okay, so we are basically done here. Um, I just uh, need a little bit more brake line to make it to the other side, and then we can finish that all up. I just need to get uh, uh, three or four uh, bolts to uh, bolt on this. So we'll get that on tomorrow and hook up that steering column and everything. And then I think we'll be done tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to go to the junkyard and I'm going to take some motor mounts off of uh, a uh, 60s truck out there and I'm going to grab some wheels here. So hopefully tomorrow we'll be able to see this all done and on the ground and everything. Peace.